welcome to the first installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Um, this is a, what I want to say, a follow-up, or it, it really is a follow-up to the shows that I've been doing here uh, over the last several years, which I've called Frank and Mary, um, yeah, in, or Elder Law with Frank and Mary. But I realized that what I really wanted to focus on was the life of Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary, if you've seen my shows or gone to my seminars, are an older couple. Their goal is to live in their house until they die. They've got three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. You've heard that story. What, you really, what I really want to try to get to is if Frank and Mary, as they're getting older, and they want to stay in Nantucket, they want to stay on Nantucket until they die and be buried in the backyard, how do they do that? Especially uh, if one of them has cognitive issues, if one of them has memory issues. So we're going to talk a lot about that. With me today uh, is Allison Forsgren, who has been on the show, on the old show before, yeah. but is going to be my co-host on the new show, which I'm really excited about. Thank you, Arthur. So thank you very much for coming, right? So I just had the, one of the classic Nantucket experience, right? Just, just drove from Syasconset to the center of Nantucket in 45 minutes. How did I do that? because I was following a house. Isn't that great? <laughs> a Actually, house on wheels. Watching yeah. a house going down the road at three miles an hour. Congratulations. Was a, oh, thank you. I feel, you know, every time I come here, I feel like a little bit more <laughs> local, you know? So one of the things we talked about, and, and I know that we've discussed, I mean, you're so involved in, in a lot of this stuff because you actually have three hats. You know, you're, you're, you're the chair of the, of the friend, chairman of the board of the Friends of Our Island Home. Co-chair, yes. Co-chair, you're the, you're the chairman of the board of the, of the, of the, the Nantucket, Nantucket Council on Aging, right? Correct. And you're also, in many ways, leading the effort to make, in conjunction with the Alzheimer's Association, to make Nantucket a more dementia-friendly community. So you've got a lot of things you're really focused on. But by, and, and, and you, and so you're doing all of that among the things because you are, You've been here a long time. Talk about yeah, that for um, a second. I moved yeah. here in 1979, yeah. and my parents moved here in 2003 when my dad came down with an unexplained problem. And it turned out to pr have been Parkinson-related, mm -hmm. but um, it was a, probably now a Lewy body dementia. What, what in, what in, in hindsight, you think it's Lewy, yeah, Lewy yeah, body dementia? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, and I, they lived here from 2003 until 2014 and 15. And I spent a lot of time looking for meaningful activities um, to, to do. Uh, and I've attended every help group or, you know, that I could find. But yep. my mother and I basically um, worked hard to keep things status quo and keep them together and keep, keep my father home and safe. And to keep him home. Yeah. And to keep him home, despite the fact that obviously he was having memory loss and some related issues. And once again, just as, as so we, we so often talk about the fact, dementia, right, is not a disease, right? There are a bunch of diseases that have symptoms that are dementia symptoms, and the dementia symptoms are really all around having trouble remembering things. And Lewy body is one of, the, I think I've heard Lewy body dementia is referred to as the, 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 you know, the most common disease that no one's ever heard of, right? It's mm -hmm. one of the major causes of, of uh, Yeah, of one dementia. of the seven dementias. Yes. So there yes. are many. So you really went through it mm -hmm. and you saw kind of what things were that were available. And, and so you just become, and in, 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 at this point, both of your parents have passed away. Correct, right? yes. And you become just really involved, which is wonderful. So, so one of the things that we've been talking about was, was w when you're thinking about a community like Nantucket as being a dementia-friendly community, what, is, you know, what does that mean? And, I, and, I, and let me start off by saying, to me what it means. It okay. means, and we're going to talk about the different stages you just described, you know, the, the kind of the passage for your parents, right? Um, and that the goal always is to try to stay at home, right? Whoever wants to move out of their home, especially if you're having memory losses, because the one thing about your home is it's the last place you're going to forget about, right? You're going to know right. where everything is, you know, where the bathroom is, you know, where the salt and pepper are, you know. So it's kind of trying to, de but it's also about developing a world or a community around that, right? So it's not just, certainly there are things about adapting the home and fixing it up and all of that stuff that are really important. But then there's the rest, then there's the rest, you know? Like, what do you do when you go out, right? Because otherwise you can't go out, you know? And what do you kind of, what, you know, what do you, what do you do if you go to a restaurant, you know? Kind of, is, do the folks there, 
understand that you have dementia and know as a result of that, that if you have memory loss, what you can be doing about it, right? If you go to the bank, you know, folks get confused. If you get lost, what is the role of the police? You know, if the fire department shows up because something happened at home and you fell down, what do the fire department know? So there are all these kind of players that, that really kind of, that, that deal with all of that stuff. Now, from your perspective, how did you deal with all of that stuff? And once again, this is the first show, so it's one of the we're really thinking about. If you're Frank and Mary, what do you want in your community to help you deal with all that stuff? Well, um, how I dealt with it is yeah. I was a full-time caregiver with my mother, and availed we availed ourselves of everything we could find. Um, I think that now the dementia-friendly community initiative. Yeah is looking at all of those different you know, social spheres and they have a training for first responders which we did. Tell, tell, talk a little bit about the Dementia Friendly Communities Initiative or about the, or about, because your, your, I know you, 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 you sponsored, you had some folks from the Alzheimer's Association over. Correct. Right? Um, and as a matter of fact, we're taping this show before the so, next round of this, so you can even kind of talk about what you know what, what, what you're anticipating, because by the time folks are seeing this, some of this stuff will actually have happened. Well, right? the Council on Aging voted at one of our meetings to pursue this initiative. Yeah. Um, the Mass Council on Aging has a newsletter, and they mentioned a grant available, and we thought we'd pursue it. Um, since it was relatively late in the year, we put a rush on it. And both Rachel Day, who is the Human Services Director for the Town of Nantucket, yeah. and myself did the training, which is required to have a dementia ambassador in the town. Mm -hmm. So that is a position that is a volunteer position that yeah. coordinates the trainings and the longest days and fundraising down the road and yeah. um, facilitates bringing people, in our case, to Nantucket yeah. to educate and teach us how to advocate. So, And this was training that you actually did, uh, did you end up doing this off island? Did you, yes. And this was all with all through the Alzheimer's Association? Um, yes, th they've only right. had two trainings. Yeah. It's a new program, just came out in January. Yeah. And um, so Rachel and I became trained. Um, we also brought to Nantucket um, the trainers to do three individual trainings mm -hmm. on May 1st. It was relatively last minute. Yeah. Um, but the first responders, the fire department, police department, um, you know, showed up in strength for theirs. They yeah. are really the first responders and um, are great outreach. I mean, they know who and where and yeah. um, are already very well trained, but it's good to have this training under their belt as well. And, can, and by the way, can you talk a little bit about that? Because from my experience, I, I've really come to appreciate that if the first responders really get it, it really helps kind of with just everything. So you can just kind of talk about what the, what the first responder training is about, you know? And well, I did get to attend because yeah. I was coordinating it, um, but you it's You didn't have a, to pretend you were a policeman? No, no. A, 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 a fire truck, a fire no, hat? No, I no. did not, but okay. I might have. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we are fortunate that our police department also offers the CIT training, which is crisis intervention training. Mm -hmm. um, so we're way far ahead of the game. Um, but I think that they, everyone did take something away from this in addition to that about the sensitivities around somebody when, you know, you suspect or you know that they have, um, you know, dementia of some type. Yep. So. Yep. Um, you know, it talks about, you know, transport, talks about how to deal with somebody. You know, we have programs already for wandering that are in place, but um, it's great to have, you know, what we need is a, is a master list of what we have and where it is and how to access it um, so that people who need it can, can find it. Can find it. And as a matter of fact, you know, in one of our shows, we may want to have Kevin Marshall in from the police department, mm -hmm. or someone in from the fire department, just to talk about the programs that are in place, mm -hmm. right? To really kind of help people out who are just, who might get stuck, who might get stuck. But what about the, tr the training that was done for the, for, 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 I think, was there a training for business folks yeah, also? Yeah, and then there was a training for, for business um, people in general. Yeah. They have trainings for faith organizations, banks, libraries, municipal offices, because each, each training is 
for a specific situation that someone living with the disease and or their care partners might find them in, like yeah. if you're going to pay your taxes or, uh, and, and there are ways to make that process be um, much more comfortable for everybody. And that's what the trainings are for, you know. And just to have people be aware, because mm -hmm. I suppose someone shows up at town hall and you're having some memory problems, it's, it's easy to kind of get lost in the shuffle, right? I mean, dementia-friendly Nantucket will hopefully make our community safe, inclusive, and respectful for people living with dementia and their care partners. Um, from going to the post office to, you know, making sure that, you know, at, at the bank, that what's being transacted is what everyone wants to have be transacted. So right. It's, right. it covers, you know, a, a, a lot of things. And I know that, that and, and once again, this may be someone we, we want to bring in, I know that, that the Attorney General's office actually had done, um, back when Scott Harshbarger was the Attorney General, that's the thing about our being so old, you know, you start <laughs> actually doing these programs that happened and then kind of faded. He had done a program specifically to try to do, to get a protocol in place for folks in banks. So that when somebody comes in with someone that no one's seen before, and all of a sudden they're getting on the person's accounts, you know, and there's a power, there's big withdrawals to have, which all might be fine, which all might be absolutely fine, or maybe not so, right? So, but, so the question is, is there some kind of protocol so that somebody is looking at that and as opposed to just saying, well, that was weird, you know, something in, is, and saying, was that okay? From, was that okay what happened? From what I understand, the, the banks have something like that in place already. Um, but this is as much Which for... Which is terrific. Yeah. This is as much for customer service, for, right. you know, trips to the bank, for, you know, for understanding what someone who has dementia or a memory issue is, is feeling when they make a transaction like that. So. And, and I suppose one of the most common things you, we talk about is folks that are in restaurants, right? The one place where if you're at home, and, you know, the one, pl the one reason to get out of the house, you know, if you're the, if you're the person who has memory loss and their care partner, and to be kind of in a social place where you can relax, except maybe it's not so relaxing if you've got memory problems. Right. Well, there's, right? A set, there's a program called the Purple Table, which oh, is... Oh, yeah, talk about that a yeah. little bit. And we may want to have somebody... I don't know if there's a Purple Table no, there restaurant isn't yet. here we yet. Haven't, yeah, we haven't brought that up. But yeah. the Purple Table is our restaurants who have a designated space and a designated um, menu and are welcoming to people who have dementia or memory issues who may or may not feel comfortable sitting in the middle of a room or um, you know have to eat earlier so that there's not a lot of commotion right. or, you know around them but it's just right. super sensitive to people who you know look at a menu and can't discern you know you know there's a chicken fish you get you get yeah. the normal menu you get lost well you know right? it's nice to not have to explain something to people um, right. who can make decisions on their own but just need you know, it's helpful if it's simplified a little bit. So that's a, that's a program that won't be in effect um, this summer for sure, but I'm sure that there are restaurants that will, you know, provide a, a purple table for families. It actually encourages people right. to go out when often people who have a situation that, you know, they might need, you know, additional help moving or getting around, um, you know, to be aware of that and to provide a special spot. And have a wait staff that's trained, exactly. so you have someone exactly. who's trained. I know. I remember going to, to one of these events, and somebody pointing out that for folks who have memory loss, then then in, then in, then one of the things that kind of happens, also, if you've got if you've got in, it, this is the Alzheimer's situation, is that your field of vision starts shrinking, so that you're really only looking at kind of in what's in front of you. So if there's a waitress over here that's saying, "Oh, Mr. Bridgeron, what do you want?" that person doesn't exist to you. So the notion of actually getting in front of the person or even kind of kneeling down, oh, Mr. Bergeron, oh, Ms. Forsgren, what would, you know, forget the menu. Would you like the chicken or the fish today? You know, or last time, you, you really liked the fish the last time. What do you think about the fish again? It can just change the experience. Yeah. It can change the experience. And, and, and that, once again, that one of the reasons for this show I'd love to have that woman come down. She, you know, she, that woman who invented Purple Table is in Acton. 
She did it, her mother had dementia, she took care of her mother, as, you know, as, as I think both of us have come to appreciate, the people who were really involved in this, typically there was a family member, either a close friend or typically a family member, and they watched it, and they watched the holes, and they saw the holes in the system, right? And, 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 so, they're, and so they're committed to it, you know? And, and, and I think one of the things she mentioned in, in, about her restaurant is that she'll, the, one of the pieces of the Purple Table Reservation is you call and they'll tell you, well, you know, if someone has dementia, you really don't want to be here from like 11 to 1. I mean, it's nutty, you know, but 2.30, right? And you don't want to, as you say, you don't want to be in the middle of the room, right? But, you know, by the window, how about by the window, you know? Well, you know, ultimately I think what, what happens is that they are, you know, in their advertising or promotion or on their window, there's a purple table. So the people who are looking for the reservations yeah. don't want a 7, a, you know, 7 p.m. Right. reservation. They, right. they understand what their limitations are and what's best for their, for their person living with the disease. And what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. and what they're looking yeah. for. So, um, you know, that's a, a goal going down the road is to, you know, find places that, you know, are in, are welcoming to that. And I think, and and so I think one of the pieces of the show is we really want to talk, bring in people that are talking mm -hmm. about that. And then, as as we talked about before the show, but then there then there may come a point though where it just isn't safe at home. It just isn't safe. You know, with with the you know the caregiver, it isn't. And maybe you need to look at other alternatives. Which here, as we were talking about. Sherbin Commons, I think, was invented a number of years ago by a nonprofit to provide that alternative. They were a little early. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons they and went they, under. And they were a little delayed. And they were. It took a very long time for that, prop, you know, project to be completed. To be completed, and then it got, you know, and it died, and there was bankruptcy, and there was the private guy. And I think it's wonderful, you know, that it, now it's been reacquired by a nonprofit that's local again. Mm -hmm. And hope, and hopefully we can get the folks from Sherburn Commons to talk about that. But in the course of our conversation, you said you mentioned something about Sherburn Commons, which was it's a little on the pricey side. Correct, correct. So I the mean, question is, yeah, they don't take medic, you know, they don't take Medicaid. So how do we figure out one of the pieces? How do you figure out having an option if you're not at home, and if you don't have a lot of money? That's a right. that's a big that's a Big question, um, you know. Reverse mortgages are what some people have done. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that people who own property on Nantucket often don't qualify for a lot of the programs because the property values are so high. So it's a double-edged sword here. Right. Um, and there, it'd be great to figure out a way to have that work a little bit, you know, better. And, and that may be one of the things we can really talk about here, you know, because Nantucket, I mean, it's a blessing and a curse that there is so much property value here so that it may be that there are some ways that you can kind of, that you can use some of those, some of those resources, right? But I think we can really, it, this would be a really useful place to have that discussion, right? Yes, how I do think you, so too. How do you make that option really work? And how do you have those folks, how do you have folks as a res who have, as a result of being there, really have become accustomed, among other things, to dealing with folks who have memory loss. How can they be sharing that kind of more broadly in the community? Yep. How, how can that be like a real resource? And I, then another thing we talked about, and I'm just gonna mention, there are two others, because I wanna end with our island home. Right? Mm -hmm. I wanna talk about our island home for a while. Um, but we also talked about this notion of having, having an option even if you're still at home, but if you're, you're the, the person and the caregiver of having a place where you can go during the day, having a program where the caregiver can leave you off, right? So the caregiver can go get the banking done, get some stuff done. Or I was thinking of one, this lady just said, said to the person who was running the program, I just wanna get some sleep, you know? I just wanna get a break. But to have a safe place and a, and a homey place where folks can come. Well, part yeah. of the dementia-friendly Nantucket initiative is is generating a memory cafe, which is a place for people to go in the early stages mm -hmm. of um, Alzheimer's or dementia, where they can meet other people who are living with the disease, and their caregivers can join to meet. And there is a program or something to to do, not super formal. The ones I've seen no. have been have been great. 
you know, you can't tell who the person with dementia is and who the caregiver is. Right. So it's a relatively new concept in the United States. Um, Massachusetts now has 83 memory cafes and a great support system for people who run them. So, you know, we're looking closely at how to pull that off. And how to do that. And so, and so we may want to bring somebody from, from the, back in the mainland mm -hmm. who has done something like that, or God forbid, from the other island. I, I may have mentioned to you that the other island happens to have the memory cafe that I think it may be the most successful now in the state in terms it's, of the number of people that go it's every... Once, and it's once a week. Once Many a week. are once a month. Or once every other month. It's simply unbelievable. Unbelievable. What is, what, it, what, 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 and once again, in a similar circumstance, you know, with a community, but I think once again, a community like Nantucket where the benefit is people start off knowing they got to work together because you're on the island, you know, and you, you know, you're not going to go off island to go to the memory cafe, you know, it just, it, right, so you, you need to be providing these services, right? Yeah, no, they, um, I've yet to visit, but I plan to go see their Center for Living, which is, which combines a memory cafe, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you've been there, yeah. there's a memory cafe, but also adult day. There's adult day, And right. that's, you know, ultimately to keep people in their homes longer, to have a facility where they can be, you know, their caregivers can be free, they can be, um, you know, enjoying themselves um, separate from their caregivers. I mean, I've not seen many um, adult day centers, but boy, they're a godsend to people who, who need them. And yep. there are people who do now, and there'll be more people who need them going forward. And, and going back to your comment earlier about, you know, we need to be figuring out these programs for people who can, you know, who can, we need to make sure everything is affordable. One of the interesting things about the, the, the Martha's Vineyard one, right, which I am aware of, is that through an unusual um, cooperative agreement with uh, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands, there, if you are, if you are, if you are on MassHealth, um, MassHealth will pay for your, go, your, your ability to go to this program. Typically, the typical MassHealth programs uh, do not pay for um, social, so-called social day programs. Only if you have much more ser much more serious dementia symptoms, and you're in, in and you need model. to be in a medical, a so-called medical model with nurses and physical therapists and all this stuff. So, so it, we know that there's a program that can actually help. So maybe we can bring on some folks that are going to talk about that. So now I just want to talk about our island home, because as you know, now when now you're you're you're. Did your father spend some time in our island? My father spent time there, and my yeah. mother also rehabbed there. So they, so, so you spent some time in our island. Correct. Right? As I have said many times, this, this was, this, the, I, my, the island home is your, your classic. Don't ever judge a book by its cover. I remember the first time going to visit the island home, and the, 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 uh, the power, the door, and this was stuck. You know, and this little sign. You know, you have to push the door open, and I'm going in, going, yeah, this is a little bit, you know, because it's kind of old, right? It is the best nursing home I've ever been to, right? It's just wonderful, wonderful, because and, and you can feel it once you're inside. Once you get past that door, once you're inside, it was just just wonderful feeling about it. And I, I could, and I, and it is. It, I never felt it was one thing. It's like a whole bunch of things, you know. And maybe part of it is that everybody seems to know everybody, you know. And I think a big part of it is that it isn't corporate. That it isn't corporate. Now I know that there's that whole issue of should it be town owned, blah, blah, blah. and I and right and maybe we can talk about that, right? But the but the so, but but the, the the notion of having a place that is truly a community place, and I remember talking to the the pastor of the, one of the Catholic parish that said, oh yeah, we have mass there every it was every every other week. It's open to the public, you know. And then I went, you know, you had invited me to the uh, to Valentine's the, Day dance. the Valentine's Day dance, With the Coast Guard, oh. yeah. Oh, that was so good, right? So, for, to me, every community has to have that. At the end of the day, if you really, if, if because of your, your, your physical, your medical condition, you need to have a nurse around all the time, right? You still have to be able to stay in your home. You shouldn't have to go far away to a place, and even on, and on island, even if it's in your community, it's far away. Because it's like the nursing homes are these big corporate things, you know, and it's kind of like there's a moat around it. And you go to the nursing home, everybody waves goodbye, goodbye, we'll see you when you're dead, goodbye, you know. It's terrible. 
and and this place and and what's fun about talking about this now is that in, you know we talk, you we remember you, the the new executive director came to your meeting one of mm -hmm. your meetings, and said, we all get the fact this whole issue of where it's going to be, it's going you know that we figured that out it's here right so now we just need to figure that out right, so being part of figuring that out it could be a wonderful thing. It okay. could be a wonderful thing. Um, you know, what I find about our island home is that we don't have, you know, there's no veterans hospital, there's really no other um, long-term care facility on Nantucket. Yeah. Um, sometimes people's spouse, you know, people are, who are living comfortably at home have something happen to their spouse and so until they, that is remedied, there should be a place for those people to reside that require, you know, that kind of care. Um, you know, going into our island home, I mean, I've known most of the people in there, in their other lives, and so when you go to visit one person, you're really visiting everybody, um, so, and that is yes. great for the person, yes. you know, for the for the staff. It's great for the definitely for the residents, and it's a very comfortable and unlike any of the three nursing homes that my parents were in off island. Um, during my journey, yeah. it's by far, you know, it's and so accessible. I mean, who doesn't drive by five times a day? So that's a piece of what we want to talk about because I think that it's a big item. It's a big item on everybody's agenda. On everybody's, it's kind of top of mind here because we're talking big money. There's ta you're talking about a lot of stuff, right? So we want to bring people in. We want to be helping through this show to keep people acquainted with how that process is going, because I think it's really an important part of what we're doing. Right? I do too. So that's why this show's going to be a lot of fun. So we got a million things to do. Um, you've heard about a lot of them, but also what we really like to know is, if there's something else you want us to be talking about on this show, just let us know. Just let us know. And, and, and what we'll try to do is do a, we'll have a, uh, a banner you know, when we do this show so that you can email us, right? Especially to email and email Allison, right? At the at the friends of our island, <laughs> be, right? Because she just loves getting those <laughs> emails. So, thank you for watching. This show is going to be shown several times a week, starting later in June. Um, and I'm supposed to know those times, but I don't. But by the next show, I'll re remember. And hopefully, for in, for in July, we will we will be looking to invite maybe one of the people that we just talked about, perhaps the new uh, director of the island home, perhaps the folks from Sherburn Commons depending on everybody's schedule, right? And I'll make it over here despite the fact that everybody's here now, I noticed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for watching. We really look forward to, to, to talking to you. There's going to be a monthly show, so we look forward to talking to you next month in the next installment of um, Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Thank you.